Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to the video. This is part two for my take on an air-driven egg separator for egg scattering fish. And it's an idea I got from Blake of Blake's Aquatics. Uh, definitely go check out his channel. He has lots of wonderful videos and I'll leave a link below to the specific video that I got this from. Now in part one, I had built the general box that this is all going to fit in. And in part two here, I am going to make all the workings that's going to go inside that. And before I get into all that, one of the things I want to cover is I think this actually does need to be air driven. I could uh, obviously hook up the lift stacks on this to uh, water pumps, but I think the eggs going through the impellers uh, would probably cause more damage and end up uh, ruining more eggs than you would actually end up collecting, even though you could probably get a lot more flow that way. So this is going to be air driven, which is great because a lot of my stuff in the shop is run by air and uh, it's just ever so simple for me to hook this up that way. So this is going to be the tower. So what's this is going to have uh, a couple of purposes. First off, you can see I raised the bottom. That's because uh, in the front part of it, it is going to not touch the bottom. It's going to be about uh, an eighth of an inch. Well, it's a quarter inch total, but part of that's going to get used up. A little over an eighth of an inch gap between uh, the ramp that's going to slide down this and uh, the, where it flows into the lift stacks. Uh, I wanted the gap to be quite small. Uh, first off, the eggs are going to be really quite small, so it's not really a big issue that way. But the larger the gap, the harder it's going to be to get uh, sufficient flow to, uh, you know, encourage the eggs to go uh, up the list stacks, and of course, and then settle out in uh, the main part of the container. So most of this is just going to be empty volume. As you can see here, it's just a large box with two holes at the bottom and uh, I'm running my finger along at the bottom there, that is the gap. So one of the pieces is, uh, like I said, a quarter inch shorter than uh, the rest of the box. So when it sits up, as you'll see in a few moments, it is going to leave that nice little gap. And remember from part one, I did put the ramp in place and I put a piece of acrylic the same size as the bottom of this, uh, just to show you how that was gonna fit. So once in a second here, you'll see it. Uh, I'm going to uh, put it down. You'll see that nice little gap there. So those two uh, holes, obviously, are where the lift stacks are going to go. And I cut them uh, to be a friction fit. So that way, uh, I don't have to, like, I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm going to give it a try. But if it doesn't, obviously, my, my main theme for everything here is uh, make sure I can reuse all the parts. So friction fit like this. Uh, it's just so simple to me to pull these uh, lift stacks off and use them in something else. Actually, the workstation you have here, I'm uh, in the process of making a bunch more drawers for it, uh, which will be up on the other channel, which is coming up shortly. Uh, one of them is just a whole pile of offcuts for tubing, which is, uh, well, actually one of these is one of those. And that way I can uh, reuse as much as possible. So there you go. That's going to sit like that, and it's going to fit in one end here. And that's pretty much as simple as that is. Now the ramp is going to hit uh, right at the very bottom. You're going to see it here in a second. Right there, it's going to clip in there and just drop in. And that's it. That's the whole ramp and everything. Uh, this is the whole collection part. But now I have to get to the part where uh, the fish are going to you know, do their business. And I kind of went back and forth on that for a little while. I wasn't entirely sure whether I was going to... Uh, just put a sheet across the top of this, uh, obviously drop down a little bit, uh, and then uh, just drill a bunch of holes in it, or run a bunch of slats and then have those gaps. Uh, I decided in the end, because I have a whole pile of stuff, uh, to use quarter inch acrylic rods. Uh, they're solid rods. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make um, two brackets that are gonna run the entire length of the uh, top of that. And I've uh, set it up here so they're, they're quarter inch rods with a quarter inch gap in between them. Because I plan on putting uh, not just Java Moss on the top of this, I also plan on putting uh, some marbles to hold everything in place. And I didn't want the marbles obviously dropping down inside. So my uh, mill is not long enough to run that whole length of this. So what I'm doing here, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm lining up with the first holes you saw there. And I'm going to unclamp this now and then shift everything over and that last hole will become the first hole and then I'll just um, do the next series and so on and so forth. It's not 
perfectly accurate, uh, but then again, it doesn't really have to be. This is just for a bunch of fish to lay eggs on. And because they're going to be round acrylic rods, they're going to be nice and smooth with no sharp edges, and that way it won't cause any distress to the fish. And they also, because they're round, uh, any eggs that do uh, fall through the java moss and the marbles uh, won't reach any flat surfaces and get trapped. So they'll just hit a round surface and then fall down and hit uh, the ramp and hopefully continue on. Well, that's the plan anyway, so we'll see, have to see how this works. So this way I can extend uh, the reach of my mill quite easily and manage to control the rest of the holes. Uh, there's, what, 22 on a side in the end of all this? Uh, it was uh, quite a few holes, but as you can see here, it doesn't really take that long. The hard part was actually when I went to assemble the rods together with this. I had gone for a friction fit uh, because, I, again, I didn't want it falling apart. But I decided to make it a little bit easier on myself. I uh, took each end of the rod and went over the belt sander and just sanded off the sharp edges to get them to go in easy. And as you can see here in a few minutes, it, I made it a little too easy. I ended up having to uh, weld this all together because, I mean, it's only spot welded, but the problem is the rods came in and out too easily. And uh, there's a couple times, I'm going to show you one here, where I got them all into place and then went to move it and then a couple popped out. And like I said, it was just one of those uh, comedy of errors kind of things. And I decided be very careful with it and placed it in just a little spot weld on each end and that way I didn't have to worry about this all falling apart because well I mean if the rods fall apart then the fish can get down in there and of course once they get in there they can eat eggs and uh, that's definitely not what this is all about so you can see here in a second I'm gonna get this together and it's just like I'm gonna try moving it and again it's just it's just funny so this is going to go together quite well after this, uh, and it's a simple matter now. When I, when I first decided to make this bracket, uh, I made it so that I wasn't entirely sure at what depth I was going to hold it. Like, there has to be a bit of a gap on the top for the marbles and for um, the java moss and whatever else I decide ever to use for this. Uh, but I wasn't sure what, how it was going to look, so I decided to make this uh, at the minimum amount so that I can set it in place and have a look at it. So off camera, what I did is I, I made a bracket for this. And well, for this particular use anyway, and uh, later on I can remove that bracket and of course uh, make it uh, a different depth depending upon what kind of fish I'm gonna use this for. Now I have a pair of large goldfish and they've bred once already and they get along really well, and I removed all possible places where they can lay eggs for the last couple of weeks in preparation for this. And uh, they're probably, in hindsight, were the best choice, but uh, you'll see that in a few minutes here. So there you go. This is all set now, and this just slides in. And there you go. Nice and smooth and easy. And it, like I said, it won't interfere with uh, any fish that are going to get in there and get frisky. Uh, there you go. It's really quite straightforward. Just need two lift stacks now and plop it into an aquarium and get them to uh, get uh, acclimated to it and hopefully they don't you know, find it too intrusive. But again, these are an old pair of fish that I've had for a while now and they're quite comfortable with me so I don't think it's going to be a big issue. This is the kind of the initial acid test. I haven't put anything in here obviously yet, but I stirred up the tank a little bit when I plopped this in. And you can see there's a nice current there. That's that's the important bit. If there wasn't that, uh, <laughs> this wouldn't work at all. So there it is. It's all set up. Um, just did it. So you can see the aquarium is still uh, quite cloudy. And now it's just a simple matter of leaving them to do their thing. Now uh, this is uh, probably late afternoon when I did this. And uh, again, usually with these sorts of things, uh, it is a morning kind of thing. And I found that these goldfish specifically like to uh, spawn in the morning, so uh, I thought it was pretty much straightforward for that. And I was just going to wait and see what happens. So, like I say, it's going to probably accumulate a fair amount of mulm as well, um, but I'm not too concerned with that. I'm going to probably just remove the eggs in the morning anyway, so, and then put them in somewhere else. So let's flash forward to the morning. <laughs> as you can see, especially from the thumbnail, they had a party. 
this was uh, some seriously frisky business and they uh, definitely laid some eggs uh, I think most of the spawn happened over on the side there after they managed to pull all the java moss out of here uh, but they did lay some eggs on top of this and I am going to pan over it which is the hard part of these things if you look in the lower left hand corner you're gonna see a bunch of eggs and then I'm gonna point a little marker to it here in a second through one uh, it actually works it's great this is a great idea Blake I am going to definitely try it next time with a smaller fish uh, I have some uh, black skirt tetras I've been wanting to spawn I'm gonna plop that up in their tank and give that a go for there so I'm gonna give it a little squirt so you can see the eggs uh, moving around and then the last shot is going to be of a few that are in a small plastic container. So let me know what you think of this. Uh, leave comments below and uh, I, I think it's actually really kind of cool and I think it has potential so we'll see uh, how it works for other species. Obviously I'm not going to use them for rainbows but uh, there are lots of uh, egg scattering fish so uh, we'll give it a try and, and see what happens. Thank you very much for watching. I will uh, see you in the next video and bye for now.